At the 2009 Geospatial Intelligence Conference, engineers from the Google Earth Enterprise team were recognized with the USGIF Industry Achievement Award for their innovation of bringing a portable Google Earth system to market. This year, we focused intensely on Google Earth Enterprise Portable and have learned a tremendous amount from our initial field deployments. From the theater of war in Afghanistan to the relief missions of the Haitian earthquake, we've studied what it takes to make a portable system work from end to end and have engineered remarkable capabilities for portable in Google Earth Enterprise 4.0. On May 27, 2010, the National Oceanic and Atmospheric Administration released their forecast for the 2010 hurricane season. NOAA predicted an extremely active season, with 14 to 23 named storms, 18 to 14 of those being hurricanes, and 3 to 7 of those being major hurricanes of Category 3 or higher. Inspired by the Federal Emergency Management Agency's Hurricane Preparedness Week, and in light of the dire prediction from NOAA, the Google Earth Enterprise team decided to work proactively to prepare a special globe from which new portable systems could be extracted in the event of an emergency. The season started early with Hurricane Alex forming in late June. Alex was a Category 2 hurricane that caused over 50 deaths and the second most intense June Atlantic hurricane in recorded history. The season has continued with a second tropical depression and most recently Tropical Storm Bonnie which thankfully dissipated last week. To begin this hurricane preparedness project, data was downloaded for the 103 counties ranging from Brownsville, Texas to Virginia Beach, Virginia. The imagery provided by the United States Department of Agriculture's Farm Service Agency's National Aerial Imagery Program is one meter resolution covering the rate updates from 2006 to 2010. In addition to this data, road vectors from the OpenStreetMap project were also downloaded and incorporated. The result of this is high resolution data for every part of the country from the Gulf to the Atlantic threatened by hurricanes this season, and very, very detailed road vectors as well. Due to the large detail of this data, and the large area of the Earth which it covers, the resulting Google Earth Enterprise globe is well north of 2 terabytes worth of data. While not completely unmanageable, it's not exactly the type of file size that you want to be passing around to the first responder community. So, what we will do is take advantage of GIS information coming from the National Hurricane Center at NOAA to intelligently cut globes hours ahead of landfall so that we can provide the first responders with manageably sized globes that they can use in their day-to-day -day operations. Geoengineers at Google constantly monitor REST services from the National Hurricane Center. What this means is that we can go out and pull a polygon such as this cone of uncertainty which will show the track for Hurricane Bonnie. Now this is a historical track since the storm has now passed, but at one time this represented the three-day likely path that Bonnie would take and a cone of uncertainty on either side of that path. For this experiment, we're going to say that this is a very, very good place to start as far as where we'd like to cut our globe. Google Earth Enterprise 4.0 provides users or system administrators with a very simple web-based application for cutting globes. The application works such that you have to provide a name for the globe that you want to save. In this case, I'll call it Bonnie TS for Tropical Storm. Then I need to come in here and I have the option to use the tools of the Google Earth plugin to digitize a polygon of interest. But I already know my polygon of interest. In this case, we want to use that KML that we're, that we're scraping from the National Hurricane Center. So I can go in here and I can automatically say that KML is my KML of interest. Then I can go and say how much detail do I want outside of that polygon. In other words, for the rest of the globe outside of that polygon, how detailed do I want it to be? I don't want to take up a lot of room, so I'm going to make it only go down to level 5. Inside that polygon, however, I do want a lot of detail, so I'm going to go to the maximum of this portable system, which is 24. I have the option here to go in and put a description, so I can say this is a demo of the Google Earth Enterprise 4.0 portable. And when I'm ready to go, I have the ability just to click the build button. As the globe is actually being cut from the server, I get a status notification on the bottom that tells me that the globe process is working. In my testing, the globe cutting works extraordinarily quickly. 
little bit faster than a gigabyte per minute, which is really quite good. This globe took just under 7 minutes to create and was actually the size of 13.19 gigabytes as a finished file. Now you can directly download this globe just by clicking on this link and you'll see that it's a single file, bonnieTS.glb. Alternatively, if you click on the globe directory, all globes ever cut on this server will be made available. So if I take a look at bonnieTS, I can preview this globe and start to get some understanding about some of the contents. I also have the ability to show the globe details. So when I previewed Bonnie TS, I can say, here's my description from before, and here are some other test data globes that I created on this server as well. The Google Earth plugin over here will respond to the globe that you asked to preview. So if I, in this case, have clicked on Bonnie TS, the globe we just cut, that's what's shown over here. Now you see California comes to view. That's by default, that's where our headquarters are. If we zoom in here, you see that the imagery is not that great. This is 15 meter imagery, but it's blurry, and that's because we told it only to cut down to level 5. However, if we go over to Louisiana, where we know that the globe was going to be cut in high resolution, you can already see the result that all the data that we want to have, all the high resolution down to the highest level, in this case probably about 19, is available to, for display. Here we can zoom into the Superdome and the imagery will resolve to the full resolution. Anybody now can come and download this file from our server. Downloading a 14 gigabyte file is not as bad as having to download something larger than two terabytes for sure, but it still may not be the fastest depending on what kind of internet connectivity your users may have. So in this case, where we're cutting a globe three days out, that's probably okay, because I can download this and I can distribute it physically in some sort of emergency management operations center. One person has to download it. You could even put it behind some sort of a squid proxy which would cache the globe. And then you just basically would be able to copy it physically to anybody else that wants to access the globe. Once I have my GLB file downloaded, I need a way to serve it locally. The first thing to do in this demonstration though is to show that we're going to be completely offline for every single part of it. I'm gonna go in here and turn off my Wi-Fi and you'll see by looking at all of my interfaces that I have no connection to the internet. I can prove this. I can go to google.com, enter it, and get a web page not available because my computer is no longer connected online. So what I can do, since I'm on a Macintosh, is take advantage of one of our three Google Earth Enterprise Portable installers. We have a Windows version, a Linux version, and a Macintosh version. And in the Macintosh version, I just need to mount this disk image, and that'll automatically give me a folder structure that starts with this Google Earth Portable. From this disk image, I'm going to grab it and drag it to my desktop. It'll take a few seconds to copy, and then I can go back and unmount the disk image. Here I have my Google Earth and portable folder and if I open it up to expand it you'll see that I have a folder called globes which contains a demo globe and the Google Earth portable application. The first thing that I'm going to do is grab this bonnieTS.glb file and drag that into the globes folder. Let's talk about this application Google Earth portable. This is a self-contained executable that requires no administrative rights to install on Windows, Mac, or PC. That means that all you need to do is run the EXE on Windows, or do what we just did on the Macintosh and similar on Linux, and then just simply run the application. It includes a self-contained, tornado-based Python web server. So when I click on this application, my web browser is automatically going to connect to my local host. Here you see the URL is localhost and we're running on port 9335. You'll see that there's a directory of globes. We have our demo globe, which is the default, which is currently serving. And because I dropped that bonnieTS.glb file in there, we also have the Bonnie Tropical Storm globe. If I click on the Bonnie Tropical Storm globe, you'll see that serving locally, that is the now globe that is selected. 
So here's our description. This is the demo of Google Earth Enterprise 4.0 Portable. And if I click on View in Browser, I'll be automatically taken to a new tab, which will instantiate the Google Earth Enterprise web-based plugin. Here's my globe, completely offline. And here we see that blurry imagery of California. But as we zoom over to Louisiana, we will have the full experience of having been connected to this original server and have high resolution data anywhere that was inside of the polygon which we cut. All of my vectors and all of the high resolution imagery are contained and I can be completely offline taking advantage of this. If I'd like to view this in the Google Earth application rather than in the web browser, all I need to do is launch the Google Earth Enterprise client and connect to the same server, localhost, and the port that we chose, 9335. The Google Earth application will connect to it just like it was a server hosted anywhere on a network, except this one is completely offline. The global will respond similarly that it does in the web-based plugin. And once again, everywhere inside the polygon that I chose, I'll have full resolution imagery and vectors. All this, once again, without a single connection to the internet. The final feature of Google Earth Enterprise Portable is the fact that we understand that sometimes maybe only one person in a command center will have access to the globe, but you'd like to share the imagery with everybody else in that command center. We understand mesh and hastily formed networks. That's why we built them into the very, very core of Google Earth Enterprise Portable. Going back to the server application, you'll see next to every globe that's being served a little button that says Broadcast. When you click on the Broadcast, you're brought to a new dialog which asks you to provide a key. This is only necessary if you want to protect the amount of people that are connecting to your globe, or if you want to have sensitive information that only select people are, are privy to see. In this case, I'm going to broadcast without a key and say Start Broadcasting. We'll now see that I've got a new icon up here that says GLR. This is a remote server globe. All I need to do is either physically with a thumb drive or electronically send this file to anybody else on my network and they'll be able to connect to my globe. They don't have to go out to any external servers. We can make this a little mesh network right there in the command center and they'll be able to connect directly to us. Thank you for your time. We hope you found this discussion about our new technology both informative and interesting. If you have any questions, please feel free to email us at google-hurricane-2010 at googlegroups.com. We welcome your feedback.